Are you a middle-aged white lady scrambling for burning new information coming hot off the presses about the new hit show, The Gilded Age? Well, we got none here, and I don't plan on enabling your fixation with tales of rich families in the 1800s. But while the trend is still fresh, why don't we learn about The Gilded Age? The Gilded Age was a period in the United States lasting from the 1870s to around 1900 and lasted five presidents, those presidents being Rutherford B. Hayes, James A. Garfield, Chester A. Arthur, Grover Cleveland, and Benjamin Harrison. Now, I only recognize like three of those names. Imagine fighting tooth and nail your whole life, not showing up to your kid's birthday parties, putting work first so the Cleveland name shall be remembered, and you finally get so far as to become president of the United States, but your family despises you and you are just to be remembered as the guy on Wikipedia. While I recognize the name Grover Cleveland, he's out of this 22nd president and the 24th president of the United States. I don't care. This is my care meter, and you're not tall enough to ride. What was I talking about again? The Gilded Age. This age was one of rapid economic growth. Real wages grew from 60% between 1860 and 1890, and millions of European immigrants came into the country. But the period wasn't only rainbows, butterflies, and everything nice. It was one of spice, lice, and poverty. And a lot, a lot of poverty. To prove my point, they didn't have one panic. A panic meaning a nationwide depression, but two. The Panic of 1873 and the Panic of 1893. And all the rainbows and butterflies were secluded to the north and west. The south was devastated after the Civil War. For good reason. And the black people of the south were stripped of all voting rights and political power. But other than that, politics were doing well. Election turnout was high, and there were two evenly matched parties. Unions began to form and fought to end child labor, and fought for the eight-hour workday. At the same time, some groups were fighting for the prohibition of alcohol, which came into effect like 20 years later, the 1920s. Local governments also began to build public schools. But wait, there's more. In 1896, the first transcontinental railroad opened, starting the time from San Francisco to New York to six days instead of six months. Isn't that crazy? They don't think about this enough. They literally had a railroad track that spanned 3,000 miles, the length of America, and now we have roads that can do that. Instead of steam-powered locomotives, we have small cars. Just some food for thought. Thomas Edison also made the light bulb during this time. The number of farms tripled during this time from 2 million to 6 million farms. Insane. But let's get back to the bad stuff. Remember that I said many immigrants came to America during this time? Well, that was all fine and dandy for the Irish, Scandinavians, Jews, British, Italians, Polish, and the other Europeans, but it was not fine and dandy for the Chinese. In fact, it was bad. The Chinese population was 106,000 in 1880. They mostly worked in California on the railways, but labor unions opposed the Chinese labor. What? The point of a labor union is to help other workers. Second, Chinese immigrants couldn't become citizens until 1950. However, their kids born in America could. And worst of all, there was the Chinese Exclusion Act in 1882. Like what? Chinese laborers weren't allowed to go to the US. And this policy lasted until the 1940s. And Chinese people weren't even welcome in urban neighborhoods. So they settled in districts that are known as Chinatown districts. Also, also during this time, cities saw massive growth and the first skyscrapers built in Chicago. Now, for the most interesting part about the Gilded Age, it wasn't the immigrants, not the railroads, not Grover Cleveland, not the new hit show coming out on HBO, but Monopoly. That's right, the game Monopoly. During this time, the rich were rich and the poor were poor. I mean, what else would it be? The poor were rich and the rich were poor? This gap was widening and the rich were building monopolies, owning all the railroads and lead lined baby food. But who cares about that? Elizabeth Maggie, a daughter of an anti monopolist reporter, made a game called The Landlord's Game. To show why monopolies are bad, but no one cared and the game became a hit and no one listened to the moral of the game. Monopolies are bad. Anyway, drop a sub or whatever. Hope you learned something and enjoyed the video.